welcome. I'm Walter Jackson. I'm one of the chairmen of the Field of Honor in Tappan, New York. The Field of Honor came in through Carol Shaleen, who unfortunately has passed on, but we kept her idea. Mike Callahan came back and said, let's do this. So a joint venture between the American Legion, the Firehouse of Tappan, and the Reformed Church of Tappan. It, it's such a great feeling when you see these flags, 300 flags flying in a field. Not little flags, three by five flags. It's very, very impressive. impressive. The Field of Honor will be here from May 20th and it'll end July 8th. This is all supported by donations and supporters. Uh, you can go on the internet and look up Field of Honor, tap in New York 2023. That way you can donate, you can purchase a flag, and all support is more than welcomed.
his beautiful presence at our big games and will be missed dearly. God bless you, Mary Jo. It is a beautiful 68 degrees here at Clover Stadium, and we are ready for baseball in this exhibition matchup as the New York Boulders take on the NYPD's finest. Hello again, everybody. I'm Edge Van Cura here with you at Clover Stadium for this exhibition scrimmage between the Boulders and the NYPD. And the bowlers take the field now, looking to get loose before their opening contest next week. On the mound for New York, it will be Tyler Keysore. The righty will be looking for a hot start here against the NYPD's finest. Quickly going over the bowlers' defense, left to right, Vinsky in left, Cabela in center, Quitzer in right, Woolraven at short, Killahan at third, Garcia at first, DeLuca behind the dish, and McDermott We'll round it out at second.
And Masano digs into the box. Keysore is ready. Let's do it here at Clover Stadium. The first pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. The 0 one Driven out to right field. It's carrying, and it will get down and hop over the wall. It'll be a ground rule double for Masano. And just like that, the NYPD have a runner in scoring position. And that'll bring up the shortstop, E.J. Ragone. The right-hander will look to capitalize on that early scoring position base runner. Score gets the sign. The pitch. Fouled back. A beautiful 70 degrees and a packed crowd here at Clover Stadium to witness this exhibition contest. The 0 1. Fouled back again. 0 2. Keysore working at a nice pace here. Checks the runner of the 0-2. High, 1-2. and two. And still making the way into the ballpark here in the early goings. As Keysore gets the sign, he deals. Pops straight up into the infield. Garcia will make the catch for out number one. And that'll bring up the right fielder, Anthony Carnaccio. Left-handed batter looking to not waste that early runner on second base. As mentioned, runner on second base, one out here in the top half of the first. Esor gets the sign. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Deal one. Swing and a miss again. Strike two. after allowing that early runner has locked in on that strike zone. The 0-2. Throwing out the short. Checks the runner. Throw on the first. In time for out number two. A nice play there by Will Raven. And the boulders are one out away from making that runner on second meaningless. Then I'll bring up the first baseman, DJ DiMartino. Critical situation here for the NYPD. Don't want to waste that early runner. Score gets the sign. The pitch. Lazy fly ball on the right, and it will be caught for out number three. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the bottom half of the first. The Boulders coming to bat here on the Boulders Broadcast Network, brought to you on YouTube.
Welcome back here to Clover Stadium. Andrew Van Kier here with you in this exhibition game between the NYPD and the New York Boulders. Tom Bignalti on the mound for the NYPD's finest. The right-hander will look to stifle this powerful lineup of the Boulders. The home run bashers of last season will look to repeat that this year as they open play next Thursday in a Thursday, Friday, Saturday set against their rival New Jersey Jackals. The Boulders will look to get off to a hot start and will hope to get maybe to get the kinks out in this exhibition scrimmage here. Always nice to see some live pitching this early in the season. Knock the rust off a little bit and it looks like the warm-ups are wrapping up. And the shortstop Tom Woolraven will dig in to get things started for the Boulders. Nolte is ready. Here's the pitch. Low and away for ball one. Or Raven played some nice D in the top half of the first. With a nice 6 3 play to record the second out. Look to now to contribute with the bat. The 1 0. That'll be low for ball two. The 2-0. -oh. Yep, and then a little chin music there in the direction of the boulder shortstop. 3-0 now. The 3 0. Called strike one. The 3 1. And that one got him. Got Wool Raven flush right in, I want to say, his bicep as he will trot to first on a hit by pitch. And that'll bring up the left fielder, David Vitsky, coming off an outstanding offensive campaign last year, a 349 batting average, 20 home runs, and 84 RBIs. The Boulders would love to have that level of production from their corner outfielder again this season. The first pitch to him, high ball one. Not having a hard time finding the strike zone here in the early goings. The pitch. Just as I say that, called strike one. That'll draw it even at one and one to the Boulders left fielder. Full Raven leads off first. No one out here in the bottom of the first. Dolphy gets the sign. Checks over at Wool Raven at first, but he is back in time. A beautiful 68 degrees here at Clover Stadium. Andrew Vinker here with you for this exhibition matchup between the NYPD and your New York Boulders. The 1 1. Check swing by Vinsky, but he did get a piece of it and it is foul for strike two. A little bit of an excuse me foul ball there by Vinsky. He puts himself in the pitcher's count. Paul Raven getting his lead off first. The one two. Will Raven goes. Pitch is high. No throw required as Will Raven is safe at second without a play. It'll be a stolen base for the Boulders shortstop. No 
They'll draw the count back even, two and two. The two to Davinsky. Swing and a miss, strike three. And the Boulders' most dangerous hitter is sat down swinging. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Pat Kivlihan. Pat looking to add some more pop to the middle of that Boulders lineup. The first pitch to him. Low, ball one. Just joining us, one out, runner on second. And back Kiblihan at the dish. The pitch. Foul. One on one. Pignotley much better at finding the strike zone after the first bat of the pitch. Called strike two. A 1-2 count to the Boulders third baseman. Gets the sign. The pitch. Driven out to left field and deep. Back goes the center fielder. He will make the catch. What a play. That's Masano making an excellent running catch. Looks like he lost it in the sun for a moment, but was able to regather himself to make that exceptional play and probably save a run for the NYPD's finest. And that'll bring up the Boulders DH, Tucker Nathans. Nathans coming off a 275, 16 home run, 46 RBI season. The first pitch. Outside, 1 0. Nathans is a staple of the Boulders. 1 0. High, 2 0. King Nolte being cautious in the early going with the Boulders DH. The 2 0. Called, strike one. The 2 1. Called strike two. And the NYPD are one strike away from getting out of this. Runner at second, two away. Nathan's at the dish, looking to not waste that early runner. The 2-2. Two -two. Fly ball, but foul down the third baseline, just over the press box here. And we'll do it again, 2-2. Two -two. With the speed of Woolraven at second, you'd have to imagine a single would score the run here. A lot of real estate open on the right side of the outfield near the short porch for Nathan's. Here's the pitch. Driven out to left field. On coming to the left fielder, it's really in no man's land. Is it fair? No. A foul ball. And that may have just saved the NYPD a run there. A fly ball that listed in the left field and landed, from my point of view, right on the foul line. But the ump calling it dead, a foul ball, and we will do it again two and two with Nathan's. Oh. And we'll do it again. 
Nolte gets the sign, the 2-2. Outside, that'll bring the count full, 3-2. Two outs, runner on second, Tucker Nathans at the dish for the Boulders. Looking for an early RBI. The 3-2. Pop straight up. That'll be to the shortstop, and he loses in the sun for a minute, but will make the catch to where this higher the side. And just like the NYPD, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the top of the second. NYPD coming to bat here on the Boulders Broadcast Network brought to you on YouTube. Back and ready to go here at Clover Stadium as the NYPD third baseman Perez digs in. And the first pitch to him. Called strike one. So it deals the 0 1. Outside, 1 1. Working at that quick pace here as he will have to with the accelerated clock this season. The pitch. Check swing, no swing. Low and away. Ball two. If you're just joining us, Andrew Van Kira here with you at Clover Stadium. The 2 1. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Your New York Boulders taking on the NYPD's finest in an exhibition game. 0-0 zero, zero here in the top half of the second. The 2-2. Two, two. Check swing. Called strike three. Perez sat down looking. For the first out. And that'll bring up the second baseman, Andrew Collette. And the first pitch to him. Called strike one. So we're really settling in now. The 0 1. Just a bit inside and maybe a little low. 1 1.
the 1-1. One -one. Called for strike two. Working the zone and working that accelerated pace is Kisor. As he looks to get the second out here, the pitch. Called strike three. Back to back K's looking for the MYPD. And there are two away here in the top half of the second. And that'll bring up the MYPD DH, Jose Ortiz. Two outs, no one on. Looking for a little two out magic. And here's the first pitch to Ortiz. Check swing, called, strike one. Keysore sets the 0 1. A bouncer stopped by DeLuca. 1 1. Keysore steps off to gather himself a second. Back on, gets the sign. The 1 1. Outside, 2 and 1. The 2 1. Called, strike two. Ortiz not looking to get the bat off the shoulder in this at bat, it would seem. He's looked at all four pitches. As Keysor looks to retire the side in order. The 2 2. Called strike three. Three straight strikeouts looking an excellent inning by Keysor. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. When we go to the bottom half of the second inning here on the Boulders Broadcast Network, brought to you on YouTube. A new pitcher on the bump for the NYPD's finest. It is Jose Aquino. He will take over here in the bottom half of the second. In his next exhibition game, you will look to see multiple pitchers, most likely from both sides, as no one wants to take their pitchers too deep, keep everybody fresh. The Boulders especially want to keep their arms fresh for the opening of their season next week. A Thursday, Friday, Saturday set with their arch rival New Jersey Jackals. And the Boulders will look to start off the season hot and push for the Frontier League Championship this season.
a beautiful 68 degrees here at the ballpark. Fans all over the stadium, a packed house here at Glover Stadium. A great occasion always even for an exhibition game to get the NYPD's finest out here and a great experience for everyone involved, the fans, the players. It's a whole lot of fun here at the ballpark. As the warm-ups finish for Aquino, and we look like we're just about set for action here in the bottom of the second. And leading off of the boulders will be the first baseman, Gabriel Garcia. Finished off last season with a 313 batting average, 18 home runs, and 64 RBIs. A powerful, powerful boulders lineup last season. They will look to showcase that again this year. And maybe start some fireworks a little bit early here against the NYPD's finest. The first pitch. Oh, I believe called strike one. I'm sorry, I was waiting for a sign from the umpire there. I did not see one, but it appears it was called strike one. The one Outside, one on one. Gino working at a much faster pace than his predecessor did. The pitch. Driven out to left field. But there is the center fielder, Maisano. He will make the catch for out number one. And that'll bring up the right fielder, Chris Kritzer. The Boulders right fielder racked up a 301 batting average, 20 home runs, and 96 RBIs last season. Again, a very home run ball lineup for the Boulders. They will look to keep the fireworks going this season. And the lefty looks for some early knocks here. The pitch. Called strike one. Kino requests another sign. He gets what he likes. The 1 Hot shot past the diving shortstop for a base hit. And Quitzer is on with a one-out single. And that'll bring up the catcher, Joe DeLuca. Kino gets the sign. The pitch. Low ball one. Kino looks in. DeLuca gives him a little shimmy in the box. The one out. Line drive. Base hit into shallow center field. Quitzer will round second and head to third. And he will stop there. It's another single for the Boulders, and they've got runners on the corners with only one away. Just a nice bit of hitting there by the Boulders backstop. DeLuca. And that will give Giovanni Carbella a chance for the game's first run. The Boulder center fielder finished last season with a 277 average, nine home runs, and 52 RBIs. Aquino gets the sign. The pitch. Foul back. Oh, one. The Boulders faithful starting to get into it here at the ballpark. Aquino gets the sign. The runners lead. The oh, one. Hagen called strike two. Carbella does not want to waste this opportunity early in the game. A prime opportunity to get at least one on the board. With two strikes, that eliminates any chance of a small ball play here 
by the Boulder center fielder. The 0-2. Runner goes from first. No throw as that ball was low and away. And that'll be second and third now with one away. So a nice bit of heads up base running there by DeLuca. That stolen base eliminates the double play possibility. And gives the Boulders a much more favorable position to at least get one in this situation. Quino gets the sign. The pitch. Taken, I want to say outside. I'll draw the count even, two and two. Witzer at third, DeLuca at second, one away for Carbella at the dish. Quino gets the sign. The two, two. Taken low, and then I'll bring the count full three and two. That McDermott looms on deck. There is a base open. The three, two. Grounded the short, and it skips past the shortstop. One run scores. DeLuca will stop at third. A hot shot at the shortstop. I don't know how they'll rule that. Let's see. It appears they will rule it an error on the MIPD shortstop. But either way, it's one on the board for the Boulders, and they lead one nothing here in the bottom of the second. And that'll bring up the right fielder, Matt McDermott. Still one away here, and runners on the corners. Carbella leads from first. Maybe testing the waters for another stolen base opportunity here for the Boulders. You'd like to eliminate that double play ball chance if you could, as that pitch was taken low for ball one. Quino gets the sign. Carbella goes, grounded the short. No chance at the runner at second. Throw on the first, and the botched by the first baseman, and another run will come across the score. It's 2 nothing boulders, and still only one away. Sloppy play by the NYPD defense, leading to some early scoring here for the boulders. And we'll go back to the top half of the order. Tom Woolraven, the shortstop, digs in for his second at bat. He doubled, but was held at second back in the first. The Kentucky Derby plays on the Clover Stadium video board. Kino gets the sign. The pitch. Inside. Correction, Woolraven was actually hit by a pitch in his first at bat and then went on to steal second. He did not double. As the chip music came inside for Woolraven there again, is there a message we're missing here? The pitch. High 2 0. Runners on first and second with one away. Top half of the order, Tom Woolraven being in here, one out. Bottom of the second, the boulders already with two across. Would like to add more. The pitch in called strike one. A delayed strike call there by the umpire, but it will be two and one. Dermot at first. Carbella at second. Woolraven at the plate. The pitch. Inside. Did it get him? It did. For the second time today, Woolraven is plunked. And he will trot to first. And that will load the bases for David Vinsky. A friendly exhibition game you usually don't see much hit by pitches, let alone two to the same batter in one game. But that is what has happened for the Boulders shortstop. I'm sure he'll look for any excuse to get on base. 
And could you want a better hitter up here for the Boulders? The dangerous David Vinsky looking to blow this game wide open. The pitch. Grounded to third. Step on the bag for one. On to first. Not in time. So a run will cross the plate. They will get the second out at third, but they cannot get Vinsky at first. As it'll be three nothing boulders. And runners will be first and second with two away. And that'll bring up Cat Kivelhan. The Boulders third baseman flew out to center in his last at bat. The pitch fouled straight back. So Aquino and the NYPD defense have worked themselves into trouble and an early deficit here in the bottom of the second. And the Boulders look to add to it with two away and two runners still on the bases. The pitch. Called strike two. An 0-2 count to the Boulders third baseman. Looking to get out of this, the 0-2. Driven out the left center field. That ball will be caught by the center fielder, Maisano. And that'll retire the side. But three runs come across for the Boulders on some sloppy defense by the NYPD's finest. Two errors. They will look to respond in the top half of the third. Here on the Boulders Broadcast Network, brought to you on YouTube. Hey, it's NASCAR driver Joey Logano here. For over 25 years, Low Torque Quick Lube has been doing professional oil changes featuring Pennzoil. For your next oil change, go to Low Torque Quick Lube. They have the fastest pit crew in Rockland County. Let's go, bowlers! Get your tickets now for our first NASCAR weekend on June 3rd and 4th at Clover Stadium. Go to our website for all the exciting details. Hey, it's NASCAR driver Joey Logano here. For over 25 years, Low Torque Quick Lube has been doing professional oil changes featuring Pennzoil. For your next oil change, go to Low Torque Quick Lube. They have the fastest pit crew in Rockland County. Let's go, bowlers! Get your tickets now for our first NASCAR weekend on June 3rd and 4th at Clover Stadium. Go to our website for all the exciting details. Back here to Clover Stadium. Andrew Van Kuren here with you. It is 3-0 Boulders here in the top half of the third. The NYPD looking to respond. As I have a guest on the mic with me is the head scout for the Boulders and the director of analytics, Kevin Tuvey. Kevin, thank you for joining me. NASCAR driver Joey Logano here. For over 25 years, Low Torque Quick Lube has been doing professional oil changes featuring Pennzoil. 
For your next oil change, go to Load to Work Quick one. Lube. They have the fastest pit crew in oh, Rockland sure. County. Let's go, bowlers. Get your tickets now for our first NASCAR weekend on June 3rd and 4th at Clover Stadium. Go to our website for all the exciting details. Swing and a miss, strike three. And just like that, one away here for the Boulders in the top of the third. So, Kevin, opening day a week away. What can we look forward to for the Boulders this season? Hey, it's NASCAR driver Joey Logano here. For over 25 years, Low Torque Quick Lube has been doing professional oil changes featuring Pennzoil. For your next oil change, go to Low Torque Quick Lube. They have the fastest pit crew in Rockland County. Let's go, bowlers! Get your tickets now for our first NASCAR weekend on June 3rd and 4th at Clover Stadium. Go to our website for all the exciting details. An excellent thing to hear in the early Welcome. The season. I'm Walter Jackson. I'm one of First the chairman of the one, two Field count, of Honor the Traviato, in Tampa, New York. NYPD left fielder. The Field of Honor came in to uh, Carol Shaleen, so who unfortunately has passed one, two. on. But we kept her idea. Taken low. Mike Callahan came two, two. back and said, let's do this. So a joint venture between the American Legion, the Firehouse of Tampa, and and the Reformed Store. Church of Tapia. It's, in. It, it's such a great the feeling pitch. when you see these flags. Wow, back and we'll do it again. 300 Three flags flying in a field. So, Kevin, one week Not of little flags, training camp left to go. Flags. What is that final league very, like very impressive. before opening day? Impressive. The Field of Honor will be here from May 20th and it'll end July 8th. This is swing and a miss, strike three. Supported by donations back and supporters. Back to back K's. Uh, you can go on the internet. And Keesor is up really finding a groove now. He in New York. out his last five. That way you can donate. You can purchase a flag. As well head back to the top of the and order. It's Anthony Maisano, the North center North. fielder. For the Atlanta Atlanta Atlanta. Win. So Kevin, what is it? How is the experience for the players getting to do this NYPD exhibition game? Jay Santos, a dive and a catch. One, two, three, breaking ball in there for a called strike three. three. One, one, sawed off down the left field line. It might play, and it is fair just down the left field line. Hey, it's NASCAR driver Joey Logano here. For over 25 years, Low Torque Quick Lube has been doing professional oil changes featuring Pennzoil. For your next oil change, go to Low Torque to Quick one. Lube. They have the fastest pit crew in Rockland County. Let's go, bowlers! Get your tickets now for our first NASCAR weekend on June 3rd and 4th at Clover Stadium. Go to our website. Great dress rehearsal. And it looks like they will call him on the swing for strike two. Two and two now. One strike away for another great inning for the Boulders right-hander. He gets the sign. The 2-2. Two -two. Called strike three. Six straight strikeouts. And that'll do it here. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me. A quick inning I wish we could have had here a little longer. We will have to get you on, and we go to the bottom of the third. Boulders coming to bat here on the Boulders Broadcast Network here on YouTube.
back here to Clover Stadium. Andrew Bencure here with you. Bottom half of the third, three nothing boulders. As Tucker Nathans digs in. And I'm joined by head scout and director of athletic of analytics for the boulders, Kevin Tooby. Kevin. Great to be here. Great to be here. Great crowd. Great night. And that pitch is called strike one to Tuck. Tuck, obviously a great hitter. What does he mean for this Boulders lineup? You know, you have a leader there who can play the game. He can hit. He can field. He's, he's got experience. I mean, he's a great guy to have on the coaching staff and in the dugout. Um, been around, very personable to, to everybody here. But more importantly, he really leads this team, no doubt about it. That pitch was fouled back to the 0-2. High and right over Tuck's head. One and two. Obviously an exhibition game. The pitchers knocking off some rust, but there have been a lot of chin music throws in the boulders' direction here in the early goings. Yeah, clearly some control issues uh, this early in the year. Maven drives that one in the right field. It'll be get down for a base hit and tucks on first with a leadoff single. As that'll bring up the first baseman, Gabriel Garcia. He flew out to center in his last at bat. Crowd all active all over the ballpark. Always nice to see a packed crowd here. Mm -hmm. The pitch. High ball one. obviously last year a lot of the boulders offensive success was by the long ball you think that will change this year or will that be a similar situation but you know you can see the versatility early in talking to tj you know there's a lot of different parts this year where guys can inter you know be a lot more interchangeable so we would hope that they would be able to move runners around a little bit and you know Stairs three and zero. Create that you know the scoring opportunities and, and don't just wait for the long ball. And you're right, we, we did do that a lot last year, but hopefully this year we are looking to be able to move runners and and you know we got a little more speed in the lineup this year too. So I think you'll see a multitude of things that you may not have seen the last couple of years as well. Balance always the goal for every offense, but never gonna say no to the long ball. Fouled straight up and over the screen. In the count three and one. Absolutely. I mean, you, you take the long balls when they're there, but as you said, you're going to have those swoons in the summer at some point where the bats slow up and you got to create runs. Uh, and you're seeing some local teams in the major leagues having trouble with that on their side. Yes, of course. The New York Yankees struggling on offense this year. Painful to watch as a fan. Let's yeah. hope the Boulders can have a much better approach this season. Absolutely. The three one. Line drive, foul down the first baseline. Now bring the count full. Now as we go through the season, how much do the diameters of Clover Stadium play into the offense? Is it an advantage playing here for the Boulders with that short portion right more so than anywhere else? You know, TJ's always said there's a jet stream here. When it gets hot, the ball flies. And uh, here you have the short porch. Driven out to center field. Marciano is on there. He dives. Did he make the catch? He did. The throw back to first. Not in time. Nathan's is safe. Another excellent play out there by the NYPD center fielder. And a loud out number one. The ball will also fly uh, left center. You know, so you see as it heats up, the, the you know, the home run balls do, uh, you know, Accumulate, if you will, and they, and they definitely will. We will see that as the summer heats up here in Pomona, New York, no doubt. And they'll bring up the right fielder, Chris Quitzer. He singled and came around to score in his last half at the pitch. I believe taken inside for ball one. Crowd filling in nicely here. Very much so that 
Play ground out in right field getting a lot of action. The pitch. A line drive into center field, a base hit. Another single for Quitzer. Nathans will stop at second. And the Boulders will have first and second with one away. One thing I always love here, and since I've been coming here and, and being a part of this, is that there's just so much here for the kids. You know, they're just really, you don't see this Absolutely. at other ballparks. I mean, from, from right field, Boulderburg, or from the train, or from, you know, it's, I mean, look at the line for the train. It's amazing out there. It's a, it's a complete ex experience here at Clover Stadium and just shows off the beauty of baseball at this level. There is a real beauty to the game, honestly, in its purest form at this level of play. Absolutely. The pitch. Taking outside. Oh, no. Called strike one, it appears. Mm. Wow. The umpire, I'm having a hard time getting the umpire's sign here. He mixes it up quite a bit. You know, one. Maluka drives that one in the right field and deep. Back is the right fielder at the track, at the wall, makes the catch. And allowed on two. Tuck will tag and head to third. And the Boulders will have runners on the corners with two away. DeLuca gave that one a ride, but it was not meant to be as it was caught out by the Palisades Credit Union sign. If he, if he hits that in, you know, mid-July, that thing goes out. It's funny how Absolutely. that works. And that's what you deal with when you play in a climate like New York. You'll get these days where in the early part of the season, it will be mid to low 60s or lower. Oh, definitely. The pitch. Call, strike one. See, now there's an assertive strike call right there. I get that one from time to time, and then I get the little, <laughs> the little tug by the helmet. Yeah. Oh. And Giovanni Carbella digs in. Fly ball to right field. And they will make the catch to retire the side. So two hits, but no runs, no errors, and two left on base. We go to the top of the fourth. The Boulders still lead this one three to nothing here on the Boulders Broadcast Network here on YouTube. Welcome back here to Clover Stadium. Andrew Vancura here with you alongside Kevin Tooby, the Boulder's head scout and director of analytics. Kevin, we got a new pitcher on the mound. It is Johnson Manaya. Heard a lot of good things about this young man. I have not seen him throw yet because of weather and because of I'm a school teacher. So during the day, I've been down in Jersey, but uh, heard a lot of good things. So we'll see how Mr. Manaya fares here in the fourth inning. Well, a first experience for all of us here at the ballpark then. And Manaya will look to educate you on his game. Mm, absolutely, yeah. 
And the left-hander will face the middle of the order. As the NYP shortstop Ragon will lead off. This is where you get to see the, the arms, uh, you know, the younger guys or some of the fringe guys or some of the experienced guys can throw in. The, but you see a little bit of everything. And again, under the lights and in front of a crowd, this is what you want if you're TJ Stanton and, and company down there. You know, as we inch toward Thursday, this is a, a great opportunity, especially to see Manai and some of these younger arms compete for spots, and, you know. Well, we're talking about competing. I think Tyler Kiesor might have made his case tonight. Three innings, six consecutive strikeouts to end those last two frames. He did look sharp, didn't he? He really did. And Ragon will find his way to the box. And we are just about set to continue here at Glover Stadium. Just an absolutely beautiful night here at the oh. ballpark. Just frame this night and bring it back about 49 more times. This is just great. I would love to. I cannot see it from here, but that beautiful sunset that should be right over by the sunset deck in left field. Always an amazing view here at the ballpark. The best. Naya gets the sign. The pitch. Gold, strike one. I mean, I, I was here the first night against Brock in 2011, and I'll tell you something. Every time I come here, you get a great feel when you walk in here. And I'm, uh, I'll always remember that. Who's that 2011 season line? Is that one is driven back up the middle for a base hit? Yeah, you know, 2011, and you know you had Dave LaPointe starting this thing with Damian Rolls, both ex big leaguers, of course, and you know they, they got us started. You know it's always you know bumps in the road in the first year, but considering you know they were uh, they were fun to watch, and you know they were they did a very professional job, and uh, you know at that time I've been with Pittsfield, He's now debunked. Pittsfield Colonials. <laughs> Back on it, it's amazing to see how much the Boulder brand has grown since then. Oh, the pitch. Sure. Hi, ball one. This is a place where players want to come, and that was something that, you know, Jamie Keefe and, you know, did established uh, the year we won the championship and going forward back in 14, and, and so it's still a place where, you know, as you can see with a guy like Pat Kiblihan, ex-big leaguer, you see players want to come here now, and that's very important going forward. 2-0. Outside, 2-0. Mention a personal story here for me is I have been a fan since 2011. I remember coming here for my first Folders game. I believe it was, I think it was Jersey. I don't know okay. for certain, but I believe it was Jersey. Sure. And ever since, this has been such a great team to follow. And now to be able to get on the mic and call games, it's, it's a bit of a mini dream come true. It really is great. This has always felt That's like great. my local team. I'm a Nyack resident. Sure. Nice. That's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Big mm. hack there by Carnaccio. First strike one. And, you know, you're a local guy. This is the local team. It's nice to be able to... You know, to do what you're doing, and, and, uh, and I enjoyed listening to there a couple innings uh, in the press box. So uh, I've been impressed so far, and you know, this is this is a great uh, night to get started. Appreciate that very much. As we can see, the train going by out in right field. The pitch, swing, and a miss. Strike two. Runner on first, no one out here in the top of the fourth. Some early adversity here for Manaya. And if you're TJ, this is probably a great thing you'd like to see for a young pitcher try to work through. Definitely. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Carnaccio goes down swinging, and from 2-0 to 2-2 to get the K, a nice battle back there by Manaya to set down the NYPD three-hitter. I mean, you just said it. If this is what you want to see, runner on base, you know, you can do it 10 o'clock in the morning all you want, but it's this is this is the environment that you want to see what he can, this young man can do. The first baseman, DiMartino, digs back in. The first pitch to him. Low, and DeLuca can't find it as the runner gets to second without a throw. The low pitch that hit off DeLuca's shin guard and skipped towards the third base dugout. DeLuca's an experienced catcher. He's been around. He was in the Atlantic League last year. I mean, he's he's the guy you want handling young arms. Um, 
especially early on in the year when they're not going to spot their pitches like they will a month from now. So that helps as well going into opening day Thursday. By far the most underrated part of baseball is the impact of the catcher that they have on the arms. But he thinks about the catcher just with the blocks and what they do with the bat, but the the mental side, the calling of the game, the framing mm -hmm. of the pitches, the settling down of pitchers, it's such a a tried and true skill that has to be learned. And just leadership always comes from behind the plate. For sure. I mean we've had a lot of young catchers between Marcus Nidefer, who was a very similar uh, you know, catcher in many ways leadership wise, and now you have a, a Young, a guy like DeLuca who's been around and that's that's experience you can't make up high in a way two and one obviously some very nice players to come out of the Boulder system over the years um, I think one that always stuck in my mind was Stephen Cardulo back in I want to say 2013 mm -hmm, I believe mm -hmm. absolutely before he ended up playing for the Rockies organization Steve Cardulo Naya gets the sign. The bitch. Fly ball behind home plate. DeLuca does not get a chance on it as it bounces off the dugout. And it's caught by a fan. How about that? A spectacular Odell Beckham-esque catch by oh, a lucky oh. fan who put all of his effort into that. Well done. That's just the joys of being at the ballpark. Do get to see some great plays in the stands every so often. And that was one of them there. I hope they got that on camera. That was that was uh, one for the books there. Uh, the two two. Outside the counter go full three and two. You talk about the experience of a catcher. I mean that's a great point to bring up here. You know as we just get into May and uh, you know it can save a lot of pitchers. And, uh, going forward again and as far as like I said handling the young the young arms that's that's a big plus absolutely everybody in this organization here for growth and nothing helps growth better than a veteran behind the backstop agree full count runner on second and I gets the sign the three two grounded to short fires on the first and Garcia can't come up with it and the runner will reach first and will be first and third now with one away. I believe they'll rule that an E3 on Garcia. Well, that could be. You know, early on, these little little things will happen, and this is the night to have it happen, if you will. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's spring training, and uh, these guys are getting their themselves locked in. Absolutely, just knocking off the rust in this game. Seeing live ABs, mm -hmm. live pitching. Mm -hmm. The pitch, low, that'll get past DeLuca. The runner will hold up at third. However, the runner at first will advance to second. It will be second and third now. Two runners in scoring position with one away. We talked about it earlier, but now some real adversity from Anaya to have to deal with. Two runners in scoring position, only one away. Right. Right, you got second and third here, and, and for a young pitcher here trying to uh, lock in a position, it definitely is uh, important here. Every every sign that's put down and every pitch that's delivered here for Manaya. Just going to try to settle down, take it one batter at a time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The 1 0 to Perez. Low again. Stop by DeLuca. 2 and 0. Good stop there, too. Indeed, definitely saving a run there. I'd say a uh, about a standard size backstop here at Glover Stadium. Nothing crazy. But definitely allows for a runner with some speed to get by if the pitch can get by. Another low pitch, another stop by DeLuca. 3 0 now. You have that rock wall back there, which is unique. So that ball could jut off that wall in any which direction. Uh, so that's important for the catchers to realize, too, going forward. Benaya sets the 3 0. 
low and stopped by DeLuca once again. Perez trots to first, and the bases are loaded with only one away as DeLuca will go talk to his pitcher. You know, you want to settle him down a little bit, and, and you know, now with, with the bases loaded here, I see John Tormey, uh, one of our key fans that are walking around. But, uh, you know, your base is loaded, you have one out. So this is, again, another scenario where Manaya wants to make the right pitch and get that ground ball and hopefully return two and uh, move on here to the bottom of the inning. So this is this will be a very uh, big bat at bat here for the NYPD. Uh, go to separate the meeting on the mound. And Luca will head back behind the plate. And it might be the second baseman. Andrew Collette will dig in for a chance to get the NYPD's finest right back into this game. Now he gets the sign. The pitch. Up and away, ball one. Sometimes you overthrow, sometimes you try to aim it. There's all different, you know, theories at this point. But this young man does have great stuff, so we'll see what he can do with the Luca here. The 1 0 count. Gets the sign. Again, base is loaded. One away. The pitch. Called. Strike one. He needed that one. Indeed. He's taking it one pitch at a time, battling himself back here. In a jam, but he can work himself out of it with some good pitches here. Now he gets the sign. 1-1. One, one. Up and away. 2-1. This is definitely some adversity, and I think that uh, T TJ and, and coaching staff will be able to take a look at and see these sequences for Manaya. Well, there is no one in the Boulder's bullpen, so this is his inning. The pitch, low, three and one now. Nowhere to put Colette. where you want to throw a strike if ever before right now. Absolutely. Manaya gets the sign. 3-1. Called strike two. Colette did not agree with that. Started to trot to first. But he will dig back in and the count will be brought full three and two. Great pitch there. Absolutely. Let's see what he comes back with. This is interesting here. Nowhere to put anybody. Definitely. This is probably your best challenge pitch here, 3 2. The pitch. Low ball four, and Colette will trot to first. So the NYPD finest plate their first run and a chance to tie this game up with Jose Ortiz digging in with the bases still loaded. Came back with a great 3 1. 3-1 pitch, and then he missed, missed low there, he called it. Almost looked like an overthrow there by the nine. Maybe trying to put a little too much on that last one. It very well could be. You know, trying to impress, trying to you know, do, do the little things, and sometimes you get out of that rhythm a little bit, possibly. You're feeling some pressure. The pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. And we can see a little bit of action now in the Boulder's bullpen. Here so, we'll try to see if we can see who that is. Yeah, hard to make it out on my end. As Manaya steps off. Ortiz settled back in for the 0-1. Kind of question the approach a little bit there by Ortiz. Back-to-back -back walks. And strike zone being an issue, swinging sure. on the first pitch. Yeah, I mean, you have to let him throw strike. Pitch. Called strike two. Puts the corner on that. That's big. If he can get out of this with just a one run, that would be an absolute gimme. Uh, 
as that pitch is taken, I believe, below the ball one. That's the thing, too. You know, you, you have to, these guys have to be consistently throwing strikes all around. You know, all these different teams are looking at so many arms in the spring, trying to sort it out. Swing and a miss, strike three. Manaya gets a much needed K. And just like that, he is one out away from working himself out of this jam. That was big. As that'll bring up the catcher, Andres Ruiz. He struck out in his last at bat. As Manaya will look to limit the damage here in the top of the fourth. Time. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. His fastball is clearly effective. When he throws that fastball high in the zone, they're not touching it. Indeed, definitely some velocity on it, too. Looks like a bit of a flamethrower on the mound. Not a comparison a lot of Yankee fans will like, but I'm seeing a lot of Erodish Chapman right now. Mm. That lefty arm. Bouncer blocked by DeLuca, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, you know. You, you want, you love the velocity, and, and as long as you're throwing strikes, and if you can, you know, keep those base on balls to a minimal, you, you definitely can make noise in this league, and that's something that, like I said, everybody is trying to figure that out, and they only have a couple days to do it. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss, strike two. And now Manaya one pitch away from getting out of this jam, only allowing a run. Back on the mound quickly, gets the sign. The one-two. Called strike three, and Manaya works out of trouble. Well done. One run comes across for the NYPD this inning but they cannot take advantage of the bases loaded a second time. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Boulders still lead this one 3-1 to one here on the Boulders Broadcast Network, brought to you by YouTube. New pitcher on the mound for the NYPD. It is Tyler Mitz, as he will look to face 9-1-2 in the Boulders order. Hello again, everybody. Andrew Van Cure here with you at Clover Stadium. Right now, I'm alongside Boulders head scout and director of analytics, Kevin Tuvey. And Kevin, we saw the Boulders work out of some trouble back in the top of the fourth.
as the Boulders right fielder Matt McDermott will lead it off here in the bottom of the fourth. First pitch to him. Taken low, ball one. No, you do not. As the second pitch is low, ball two. Didn't look like he had much on that last pitch. Maybe just an off speed. A 2 0. Called strike one, working a very quick pace is Mitts. Right back on that rubber. Obviously an emphasis at all levels of baseball as that pitch is swung on and missed by McDermott. Looked out in front of that pitch for strike two. Obviously an emphasis at all levels of the game to speed up play. How do you think that will impact uh, the Frontier League this season? The 3 2. Grounded and through for a base hit. As McDermott has himself a leadoff single. Absolutely. A lot of criticism um, from baseball purists, especially when it was first announced. And I, I, I understand when it was first announced, if you didn't think about it too much, it seemed kind of goofy. It seemed like a almost like a PR tactic, but honestly, watching this MLB season this year and most levels of baseball that have been okay, incorporated at the college level, too, mm -hmm. it definitely picks up the pace, but it doesn't take anything away from what you're getting on the field. I agree. I mean, it, it, it keeps the game moving, and, and maybe that's keeping, you know, the younger fan more interested a little bit. I don't know, but I think it's – I agree with you. I, I can speak to my generation with the attention span being very short, so <laughs> a – Slightly quicker version of baseball. Definitely not going to make the popularity go down. If anything, it will help. Totally agree. Totally agree. Some of the older fans take longer to get into it, but most people I've talked to really enjoy it. Called strike two. One and two now. The Boulder shortstop. Will Raven plunked twice in this game in his two at-bats. He's going to try to work his way on base with his bat instead of his body. As that pitch is bounced, the ball two. Yes, the clock will debut this Thursday. And uh, I am, as you are and everybody else, looking forward to how that impacts our league on, you know. And I'm sure it'll work out well. Do you think it favors the pitchers more or the batters when it comes to the clock? Great question. As that one is fouled straight up. Looks like the catcher is underneath it, but he cannot make the catch. And it looks like he took an awkward fall there near the end. We hope that he was okay. And he does get up, and we'll try to walk it off. Hmm. That is Ruiz, the catcher. I, he it appears to be getting the side of his face looked at. I see that I, you know what? To answer your question, I'm going to say that it favors the pitcher more. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I wonder if, if the batter takes a, you know, has to speed things up a little bit. I'm sure on both ends. I would agree. It seems that the batters get caught off guard a little bit more than the pitchers. I think a lot of pitchers like to work that faster pace, mm -hmm. but usually mm -hmm. they have to wait for the batter to adjust every single piece of equipment. For sure. Yeah or do an extended routine, but now you're working on the pitcher's time, essentially. Yeah, there's going to be a learning curve like everything else. I think there definitely will be, you know, a couple weeks to kind of get used to it. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm totally wrong, and it will. Maybe it'll be seamless. Yeah. We, we don't know. A 2-2 two -two count. Into the bowling shortstop. The pitch. Driven out the center field. That ball will be caught. A busy, busy, busy night out there for Maisano. As he once again records the first out of an inning. This, this, this Maisano has made some great plays. 
He really has an athletic center fielder out there for the NYPD. I was completely impressed by that that fly ball that uh, Kivlihan hit early on. I mean, Absolutely. That, wow. That backtrack, it looked like he almost lost in the sun for a bit back then. Yeah. But was able to make the catch. And you appear to have a meaning and potent play. Does this say, say pitching game? Does this have to do with Ruiz again? I think Ruiz. I think there might be cut or... I would agree, yes. Glory's out with the towel and some a little bit of a cleaning agent there, so I think it might be resulting, as you said, from that that fall he took earlier. Indeed. So, Kevin, I don't know how much you actually get to sit out with the crowd during games, but if you had to pick, where is your favorite spot to watch the game? So, some years ago, we used to sit behind home plate every home game for years. Mm. Uh, and it was about the fourth or fifth row up, right in the middle, and I would sit there with our interns and, and we would record every pitch on both sides. We would radio it up to the booth and we would talk baseball. And um, So I would say behind the plate would be my favorite. I, I will say, anybody listening, if you get a chance to come out here, definitely take a few innings, go out there in, in center field, sit in the bleachers and check that out. It's a whole different view and it's really, really unique to our ballpark. It absolutely is. As a fan, I have sat everywhere in this ballpark. I have sat behind home plate. I have sat up at a suite level. I have sat down both lines, mm. both sides of the outfield. I have sat in the bridge bar. But I will say, I think my favorite place to have watched games was always the short porch. Oh, interesting. It was always my best view. Felt like I was right on top of the action. As the first pitch, Davinsky is fouled back all one. The only game I ever watched from the short porch was that first game in 2011, part of it. Mm. And that was an amazing night. That really was. You know one. Well, one one You know, David Vinsky, the corner outfielder, obviously a massive part of this Boulders lineup. He is. He's one of the cogs that... The Boulders will count on again this year to get them going offensively. Coming off a 349 season with 20 home runs and over 80 RBIs. As he swings and misses at that one for strike two. He did. He had an amazing season last year. He was just, I mean, he was on base every time you looked, and he was up there with the leaders in, in, all, in many offensive categories. One, two. Going away, two and two. Definitely an all-star caliber player right there. And there the ball is retrieved by a fan. The excitement of a young fan getting a foul ball. And as another ball drifting into foul territory, but a chance out of here for NYPD defense. They cannot get to it. And we will do the 2-2 count once again. Tell you what, that, that Boulderberg playground there is just crawling with kids. I mean, it is absolutely a huge population of young people are over there right now running around. And it's great to see that early on as we... We get into the opening week. It, that's that's pretty cool, I will say. One of the, the best parts of this ballpark is just the experience that it provides everyone at every age level. There's something for everyone to enjoy. The pitch. Taken low and away. Tough take, but a good take there by Vinsky to bring the count full three and two. I agree. I mean, I've been to more minor league parks, Indy, minor league, you name it, all around. And I'll tell you something. When you leave here, you know you've been to a ball game. You just have that feel, you know. Hot shot down third base line. It's a base hit for Vinsky. He will round second. He will head there. And he is in with a double. The runner will stop at third. It'll be second and third for the Boulders with only one away. And this is definitely what we want to see more of this year, as you've mentioned before. And you have that kind of a lineup here that they're going to drive runs in. They're going to move guys over. We've seen it early, and that's one of the things TJ is very optimistic about as well. As third baseman Pat Kimmelhan digs in here.
Kibblehead has flown out to center in both at-bats. Obviously, as you mentioned, that great play in the first. Patty Kibblehead, not only a local product, West Nyack, played high school ball at St. Joe's, but major league. So definitely bring some talent and experience to the Boulders line. Incredibly nice young man, and he grew up right here in Rockland, which is great. Always great to see the local product. Pitch taken low, 3 0 now. Pitch gets the sign, 3 0. Driven out to left field. He will make the catch, the runner from third tags, and he will score easily. And it'll be another run across for the Boulders. When he gets going, and, and he, as you said before, which is, I'm right on, on board with that. I mean, he hit three balls really well today. But when he gets swinging and he gets hot, he's definitely going to add an element to this lineup that we didn't have last year, for sure. And now that'll bring up the D.H. Tucker Nathans. Nathan singled in his last half hat. The pitch. Driven out to right field. Foul over by the bullpen. Mm. Oh, up by the mini golf course. And it will bounce into the playground area. It's quite a shot. It was a few more feet to the left. And we might have been celebrating a two-run home run. Right onto the concourse. 312 out there is that short portion, right? Or at least right down the line. The pitch. Upstairs, 101. Sun starting to go down. You see the lights on, and you start to get that baseball feel back again. Pitch. Wow, straight back. One and two. It's great to be back. I know I've said that a few times, but it just really is great to be back in the ballpark and, and looking at a schedule that's happening this week. Really, really, always exciting. And again, starting off with the New Jersey Jackals in the first series of the year, a very exciting season of Boulder baseball begins next week. And the Jackals, if you haven't looked already, take a look at their lineup. Uh, they have some definite heavy hitters coming to town on Thursday. So possibly a fireworks show here in Clover Stadium set for next week. P.J. Phillips been around, Atlantic League manager, Bobby Jones up in, up in upstairs in the office. I mean, that's a great combination to put a team together right there. If, there isn't, if there's one that we can speak of, you're looking... You will see it in a few days. And his name has fouled that one straight back. And we'll do it again. Full count. Three and two. Gets the sign. Three, two to Nathan's. Outside, ball four. Great at bat by Tuck as he will trot to first. Very patient hitter. We saw that last year. Whenever Tuck was in the lineup, he... he He's a very patient hitter. And, I, and again, get the pitch counts up. That's something you want to do also. Definitely early in the year, you want to work deeper into those teams' bullpens. Obviously, there's never enough pitching to go around at any level. And if you can attack it early, it bodes well for your team going forward. By all means, absolutely. Uh, Gabriel Garcia will dig in as he takes a one-leg check swing at that one. For strike one. He as well has flown out to center twice today. And the 0-1. Tuck goes. No throw. And the Bullers will have second and third with two away. Base hit could be could mean two here, giving some distance between us and them, no doubt about it. As that ball is driven out to right field, 
Uh, under is the right fielder. Oh, and a Cirque du Soleil way of making a routine catch on that one. No runs on a few hits. No errors. And two men left on base. We go to the top of the fifth. The Boulders still lead this one 3-1 here on the Boulders Broadcast Network brought to you on YouTube. Hey, it's NASCAR driver Joey Logano here. For over 25 years, Low Torque Quick Lube has been doing professional oil changes featuring Penzlo. For your next oil change, go to Low Torque Quick Lube. They have the fastest pit crew in Rockland County. Let's go, bowlers! Get your tickets now for our first NASCAR weekend on June 3rd and 4th at Clover Stadium. Go to our website for all the exciting details. Here, back here with you at Clover Stadium. A new pitcher for the Boulders, Dawson Lane, is now out on the bump. A three-run Boulders lead here in the top of the first, uh, top of the fifth, excuse me. Boulders did manage to get one back in the bottom of the fourth. They got two in the second. And the NYPD put their first run up on the board in the top half of the previous inning as well. So a 3-1 game here in this expert exhibition contest. A beautiful attempt for tune-up for next week's opening series against the New Jersey Jackals for the Boulders. As Lane will face 9-1-2 in this half inning against the NYPD finest. And throw down the second. The warm-ups are done. And Lane will face Fabiata. The NYPD left fielder struck out swinging in his last plate appearance. Gets the sign. The pitch. Strike one to Trivado. We have seen some quality pitching from the Boulders this evening. Pitch. I believe low and in. The ball one, one and one. Crowd still here in mass as the sun begins to set here at Clover Stadium. 1-1. Low 2-1. Okay, Andrew Baker here with you on YouTube as the Boulders take on the NYPD's finest in this exhibition contest. A 3-1 Boulders lead here in the top of the fifth. As that one is outside, 3-1. Just a beautiful night for baseball as the clock hits 8 o'clock. 62 degrees here at the stadium. A beautiful night for baseball. The 3 1. Low. Oh, no call. Strike two. Pardon me. A nice pitch there to bring the count full. 3 and 2. Swing and a miss. Lane sits down. Travato swinging. One away. 
We have some defensive substitutions for the Boulders. I cannot identify all of them right now. As Anthony Maisano, the busy center, center fielder for the NYPD's finest, digs back in. He has struck out looking and doubled in today's contest as that one is taken inside the ball one. The pitch. Low ball two. As far as pitching for tonight's game has gone, Tyler Keysor, definitely the standout, the starter for the Boulders, went three strong innings and racked up multiple games as Lane deals. Side, 3-0 and now. Both Mania and Lane, while Lane hasn't done him any damage yet, only one batter, a little bit more wild in the strike zone. The pitch, inside, ball four, and Maisano trots to first. As that'll bring up the shortstop, Ragone. Ragone singled in his last at-bat and came around the score, scoring the only NYPD run of this contest. He also flew out to first, back in the first. Playing sets. Inside, ball one. Just joining us, Andrew Van Cura here with you on a beautiful night here at Clover Stadium, Boulder's NYPD. Top five, runner on first, one away. As that pitch is taken low, 2-0. and Imagine previously, fans, the Boulders' regular season starts next week. As they take on the New Jersey Jackals in a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. The throw down. Not in time as Maisano swipes second. We have not seen many stolen base attempts by the NYPD's finest. Then again, they have been limited on the base runners. But the speedy center fielder swipes second there and a scoring opportunity for the NYPD if they want to chip back into this game. The pitch. Taking inside. Three and one. Asano at second. Are going to the shortstop at the plate. Playing sets. Three one. Rounder the third. Checks the runner, fires on the first. The runner goes to third. The runner, the ball gets past the first baseman as Masano will jog home. And the NYPD have made this a one-run contest here in the top of the fifth. Defenses knocking off the rust has been the theme of today's game. As it'll be the third error of this contest. And I believe the third that has allowed a run to score. I believe that will go down as an E3. Kenny Benitez digs in for the NYPD's finest. Pinch hitting for Carnaccio. Carnaccio was ineffective in his first two at bats. Ground out to shorten the strikeout. They will see if. Quintez fares any better. As Lane has established an 0-2 count on the left-hand hit. Two strikes, one out, runner at second, a one-run contest here at Clover Stadium. Lane sets, takes the pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Quintez goes down swinging for out number two.
as Nick McQuail digs in for the NYPD's finest. He will embrace DiMartino as that pitch is taken for strike one. A nice off-speed pitch there by the Boulders left-hander. He gets the sign, the 0-1. Fouled over into first baseline territory and caught by a fan. A lot of souvenirs going out to the Boulders faithful tonight. As Lane gets the sign. Gets one he likes. Field two. Grounded to short. Let's see if they can finish it here. On to first in time and the side is retired. But the NYPD plate one and have made this a one-run contest going into the bottom of the fifth. Boulders coming to bat here on the Boulders Broadcast Network here on YouTube. New pitcher on the mound for the NYPD. It is Scott Hannon. He will look to keep this a one-run contest here in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch inside ball one. Jimmy Costin digs in for the Boulders. The pitch. Lead taken inside again. Oh, no. Called strike. One on one. And I believe Costin will replace Witzer in the order. Hanning gets the sign. The 2 1. Inside. 3 and 1. That won't be outside ball four as Kotzen trots to first. 
with a leadoff walk. As Joe DeLuca will dig back in. Catcher reached on an error and then flew out to right in his previous two plate appearances. Pitch. Outside, ball one. Pitch. Called strike one. A 1-1 one, one count to the Boulders catcher. As Costin leads from first. 1-1. One, one. Oh, strike two. And if you're just joining us, Andrew Vancure here with you for this exhibitionary contest between the Boulders and the NYPD's finest here at Clover Stadium. A 3-2 ball game in favor of the Boulders. The pitch to DeLuca is outside, 2-2. Two and two. Hammond sets. The 2-2. Two, two. Outside, 3-2. and two. Tough take there by DeLuca. But it'll bring the count full. And give him a chance move Costin a little further along on the base path. And in sets. The 3 2. Low and away, and DeLuca will trot to first. Some early control issues for Hannon as the Boulders have two on and no one out. That'll bring up Giovanni Carbella. Center fielder, also reached on error and flew out to right in his two plate appearances. That pitch is taken, called strike one. And Carbella drives that one in the right field and it will get down for a base hit. The runners will stop at their bases and the bases will be loaded with still no one away. A hot shot there by Carbella. Looked like the right fielder might have had a chance at it, but it looks like he just misplayed it slightly. Didn't give himself enough room to make the catch. He did a nice job of keeping the ball in front of him. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. Base is loaded here for the Boulders. No one out, a one run game. They would love to blow this game open here. And maybe put the final touches on an exponent exhibition win to give themselves some confidence heading into their opening series contest against the Jackals next week. Pitch. Foul back. One and two. Gets the sign. A one two. Outside two and two. <laughs> and in sets. The two two. A fly ball into shallow left field. Does anyone have a play on it? They do. A nice catch by the shortstop, and there's one away with no damage done. As we'll go 
circled back to the top of the order here for the Boulders as Tom Woolraven will dig in for his fourth half out of the game. He was plunked twice and has flown out to center in his two ABs today. And he will look to put up a crooked number for the Boulders in this inning. High ball one. Bases loaded, one out. A one run lead for the Boulders. They would love to extend that here in the bottom of the fifth. That one is taken inside, 2 0. And if you're just joining us, Andrew Van Curen here with you on the call in Clover Stadium. An exhibition contest between the Boulders and the NYPD's finest. 3 2 Boulders here in the bottom of the fifth. The 2 0. Called strike one. Holders obviously will be relying on Wool Raven for some quality ABs near the top of the batting order this season. And what a good time it would be for one here. A hot shot to third, but a foul ball. That'll bring the count even two and two. I believe Wool Raven might have cracked his bat. On that one, yeah, he's switching bats. So you just got a dead swing with that one. Broken bat contact. But an even count, two and two. As previously mentioned, the pitch clock being introduced to the Frontier League this year. Don't know if it is being affected in this game, as it is an exhibition contest, but it will be a factor to look forward to this season. Obviously, pace of play, a huge hot topic at all levels of the game. The pitch. Called strike three. Wool Raven sat down looking. And just like that, two away for the NYPD's finest and a chance to work out of this jam for Scott Hyman. Jordan Jackson digs in now for the Boulders as he takes a huge cut at that but swings right through it. Two strike one. Jackson replaces Vinsky, who had a nice double in his last AB. Called strike two. 0 2 count. Two outs, bases loaded. Don't want to waste this opportunity here if you're the Boulders. A one-run contest. You would love some insurance for your pitchers here. And in deals. Bounces that one. Runners stay where they are. One and two. A beautiful night for baseball. And a great crowd here in Clover Stadium enjoying all aspects of this absolutely gorgeous ballpark. As the train rounds through right field, Hanning gets the sign. The one, two. Foul, straight back and we'll do it again. And gets the sign, the one two again to Jackson. He deals. Fouled back right off the sweet section and drops down into the first base foul territory. And we'll do it again. No action in the pen for the Boulders, but there is some for the NYP's finest. The one two. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Hannon works out of trouble. No runs, and the bases left loaded. We go to the top of the six. The Boulders still lead this one 3 tier, 3-2, three here on the Boulders Broadcast Network, brought to you on YouTube.
back to Clover Stadium as Ish Perez digs in for the NYPD's finest. And the first pitch to him is called strike one. Lane still out there on the bump for the boulders. As Perez digs in in this one run contest. And that is a foul ball and laser right into the dugout. But everyone is okay. And the count will go 0-2. Now obviously the New York boulders, the New York area, a rabid sports market. And if you, like me, here on the 0-2, a fly ball into right field. And it will be caught. And Perez is retired. Round number one. As I was saying, a rabid sports market is New York. And the critical playoffs right now, the Knicks obviously in the playoffs, but the Rangers just recently eliminated from the playoffs have made their first big move of the offseason. They have fired head coach Gerard Gallant today. Speaking personally, it's a understandable situation in the pitch here. Called strike one. Deal one. Called strike two. Working at a great quick pace. Here is Lane. And as he prepares for that pitch clock that will be introduced this season. Taking high, one and two. Lane gets the sign. One, two. Foul, straight back, and we'll do it again. As I was saying, the Rangers needed someone to blame for this season, and it ended up being Gallant. And their next head coach could be a critical hire if they want to keep that championship window open. The one, two. Called, strike three. And they're very quickly two away here in the top half of the sixth. As the DH Jose Ortiz digs back in for his third AB. He has struck out twice in this contest. Once looking, once swinging. Look to put the ball in play this time. Upstairs, 1-0. Planning well, again, working at that accelerated pace. I, I really will think that the pitch clock should benefit the pitchers. A lot of pitchers like working at a quicker pace. A hard shot to third. Fired on the first. And Ortiz is retired. One, two, three. Go the finest. The Boulders coming to bat here in the bottom of the six. Three, two, New York on the Boulders Broadcast Network. Brought to you on YouTube.
Tony Perez, the new pitcher on the mound for the NYPD's finest. And he will face Pat Kivlahan. We begin the bottom half of the sixth. And that one is way over the catcher's head and right to the backstop, 1-0. Kivlahan has put a charge in almost every ball he's hit today, but he has not found open grass. Three flyouts, two to center and one to left. And he takes a nice hack at that one, but will come up empty, one and one. Kivlahan, a guy with major league experience, they hope to be a big piece of the middle of that batting order here in New York. Pitch, foul back, one and two. Still a one-run game here at Clover. It's a one-two. Driven out the center field, and that will get down for a base hit. So Kimmelhan has his knock, finally. And the Boulders have a leadoff base runner. A one-run contest in this exhibition affair here at Clover Stadium. The Boulders leading the NYPD's finest, three to two as the D.H. Tucker Nathans digs in once again. That pitch is taken for ball one. Nathans has a hit today. He also has a walk and a fly out to short. Looking to do more damage in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch. Hard ground ball through, and it's a base hit. Kimmelham will stop at second. It's another single for Nathans. And just like that, the Boulders have two on with none away. Just a hard ground ball in the right spot in between first and second. As first baseman Gabriel Garcia will dig in once again for the Boulders. Garcia, much like Kibblehan, has not found a knock today. He's flown out to center in both of his at-bats. The pitch. Called strike one. The 0 1 to Garcia. Taken for strike two. Two on, no one out here in the bottom of the sixth. The Boulders looking to extend their one run lead that has not changed since the fourth. Perez gets the sign. The 0 2. Brown ball, let's see if they can turn two. On the second for one, on the first, in time. And the NYPD roll a nice 6-4-3 double play. Kimmelhan will still be at third, but is now two down for the Boulders. Jimmy Costin digs in for his second at bat. He walked in his first plate appearance. That ball gets past the catcher. Kibblehan thinks about it, but will jog back to third. I believe he took a favorable bounce off of the rock wall behind home plate. And the count will be 1-0. Perez gets the sign. He will step off and think about it. Kibbleham at third. Costin at the dish. We're going to add a, an insurance run here in the sixth. The pitch. Taken for strike one. That's in a catcher by trade. Probably behind DeLuca for this season, but Looking to work in some quality at bats. High ball one. The amount of at bats he'd be getting in this contest 
Would show at least he's in consideration for that starting job out of RCC. Another local product, the pitch. Call strike two, two and two now. Perez looks over to Killahan at third, gets the sign, the two two. Called strike three. And that'll do it for this half of the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the top of the seventh. The Boulders still lead this one 3-2 to two on the Boulders Broadcast Network, brought to you on YouTube. Fans enjoying a little bit of Sweet Caroline here at the ballpark. Part of the great ballpark experience here at Glover Stadium. As Jake Ramazana will take the mound here in the top of the seventh for the Boulders, and he will face the catcher Ruiz. Looking to keep this one-run lead exactly where it is. First pitch to him. Swing and foul back. Andres Ruiz has struck out twice in today's contest. One swinging, one looking. Another guy in the NYPD lineup looking to put the ball in play. Ramazana gets the sign. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two now. As Ruiz will look to avoid the hat trick. Now down 0 2. Ramazana gets the sign. The 0 2. Gold strike three. Hat trick indeed as Ruiz is sat down looking again for out number one. Vincent Travato now digs in. Left fielder has struck out twice today, both swinging. 
a rarity in baseball these days with that bare hands on the bat, no batting gloves. You still see it from time to time, but a rarity in today's game. Taken low for ball one. And the catcher will go out and talk to Ramzana after that pitch. Fans, don't forget, boulders begin again. Opening series, Thursday, May 11th. First pitch at 6.30 and post-game fireworks as the boulders take on the New Jersey Jackals to begin this 2023 season. A fireworks show expected on and off the field as two powerful offenses will meet. Zana gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. One and one. Not unlike most pitchers for the Boulders tonight, working at a nice quick pace, preparing for that pitch clock that will be instituted this week. The pitch. Taken for strike two. Gets the sign. The one, two. Taken low by Travato. Two and two. If you're a fan of New York baseball, I will have some results for the professional teams in a minute as that pitch is taken really high. Three and two now, full count. As the Yankees got off their skid a little bit with a 3-2 victory over the division leading Rays. While the Mets were dealt a tough 5-2 loss against the Colorado Rockies. Grounder to second. Throwing on the first. And Travato is retired for out number two. And that'll send us back to the top of the order. And they should bring up the center fielder, Anthony Massiano. Massiano, by far, having the best game for the NYPD. He has scored their only run, has one of their three hits and has been an excellent defensive anchor for them in center field. That pitch is called strike one. He didn't have another job. I have a feeling one of these Frontier League teams might come call. Three, two. Boulders. Here in the top of the seventh. A one-one count now to the NYPD center fielder. Two outs. As the train rolls through right field, Zano gets the sign. One one. Foul ball. Strike two. Still a lively crowd here for this exhibition contest. Always great to see baseball with a live audience. What better of a preseason exhibition contest could you ask for than under the lights in a competitive game if your manager, T.J. Stanton, getting a real look at his team in a tight situation. Close game. Not to say that this will showcase what the bowlers' outcome will be this season, but definitely an interesting side of things to come. As they prepare for their opening contest next week. Ronzano gets the sign. The one two again to Masano. He deals. Foul back, and we will do it once again. A 
a cool and comfortable 61 degrees here at Clover Stadium as the Boulders lead a one-run contest against the NYPD's finals. The pitch. Driven out to left field. And caught for out number two. Correction out number three as the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. We go to the bottom of the seventh. It's stretch time here at Clover Stadium. As it appears that they are saying they are, this is an exhibition contest. They are going to call this game after the seventh. So we will have the bottom of the seventh. The Boulders will bat, but after that, it will be game over. As we'll take a quick break. Boulders coming to bat one last time on the Boulders Broadcast Network, brought to you on YouTube. A new pitcher on the mound for this final half inning is the NYPD's finest bring out Chris Kalinski. Refreshing Chris Kalecki. To finish out this exhibi exhibitionary contest. Excuse me. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Take in for strike two. Look, he gets the sign. Driven out to left field. 
Coming on his left fielder, he will make the catch for out number one. So this will be a, at minimum, 3-2 boulders victory in this exhibition contest as the game will conclude after this inning. However, the score, but arbitrary at this point, really the important thing today as Giovanni Carbella digs in, strike one. If this was really a tune-up for next week, pitch into foul territory, on comes the first baseman, he will dive, he will not be able to make the catch. But it will be an 0-2 count to Carbella. Exceptional effort shown there. By, I believe the quail over at first base, rocking his Matt Carpenter mustache. As Carbella looks to do some damage here with two strikes. The pitch. High ball one. As at the Boulders, their first regular season game, Thursday, May 11th at 6.30 against the Jackals as Carbella fouls that one back to the rock wall. We'll do it again, one and two. Carbella has been on base today, but he's also flown out to right as that pitch is taken, two and two. Over a solid day on defense. And that's all you can ask out of your center fielder. The pitch. A hot shot into right center field. And that'll get down for a base hit. Carbello will round first. He will stop there. It's a one-out single. And the Boulders have a runner on. As Mike Howard now digs in for the Boulders. His second at bat of the game after replacing McDermott. A pitch to him. Outside, 1 0. One gone. Here in the bottom of the seventh, the final frame of this exhibition contest. The pitch. Called, strike one. one up in the way two and one with DJ Stanton you have to like what you've seen especially from your pitching staff in this contest as far as the at-bats go some quality ABs nice contact made as that is a swing and a miss at a ball in the dirt for strike two obviously still about a half week of training camp to go finalize the roster but if you're TJ Stan you've gotten some looks in we'll see where he goes from there hot shot base hit past the diving second baseman and it will be first and second with one away as we head back to the top of the order for the boulders as Tom Woolraven will dig in for at bat number five he has been plunked twice flown out to center and struck out looking in his previous four. He will look to notch that first hit of the game for himself if he can come through here and maybe add one more run for the Boulders. Bitch, foul back on one. Crowd still hot. Waiting for that fireworks show after this contest. Pitch. Upstairs, 1 1. Lucky gets the sign. 1 1. Hot shot past the shortstop for a base hit. There's the hit that Will Raven was looking for. Everyone will move up a base, and it'll be 
Bases loaded for the Boulders with only one away. And that will bring up Jackson. Jordan Jackson digs back in. Unsuccessful in his previous A.B. As he fouls one down the first base line and over the sweets. Oh, one. Lucky gets the sign. The old one. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Jackson living that bat stay, but looking to make his presence known if he can get a hit here at the pitch. Upstairs. One and two. The base is loaded for the boulders here in the bottom seventh. The final frame of this exhibition contest against the NYPD finals. It will be a victory for the boulders, but how, by how much is the question? Fouled back once again, and we will do a one-two count again. exhibition contest between the Boulders and the NYPD finest as the Boulders prepare for their opening night next Thursday against their rival New Jersey Jackals. The pitch driven out to right center field. Under it is the right fielder. He will make the catch. The runner's tag and a run will score easily as Carbella crosses the plate. It is four, two boulders with two away. Howard will move to third on the sack. Will Raven will stay where he is at first as Pat Kimmelhan digs in for another AB. Grounded to up the middle and through for a base hit. It's an RBI single for Kivelhan. That'll extend the Boulders' lead to 5-2. To Adding on here in the last frame as Tucker Nathans digs in, looking to continue this offense. Raven went first to third on that single, so it'll be runners at the corners with two away. And a called strike one to Nathan's. Power for Lefty has singled twice in this contest. Upstairs, one and one. Lucky gathering himself a little bit. A much slower pace noticed for the NYPD pitchers than the Boulders. Assuming the NYPD not having to worry about that pitch clock coming into play next week. 4-1. Swing and a miss. Big hack by Tuck. 1-2. Two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the seventh. Runners at the corners. A 5-2 Boulders lead. We're going to add one more. Nathan's fouls that one down the line, and we'll do it again. Lucky looking to finish off this exhibition contest with only giving up two. Holders are going to add a few more just for confidence sake. The pitch. Grounder to second. Let's see if this ends it. On to first, and that'll do it. Here in this exhibition contest, the Boulders win this one 5-2 to two against the NYPD's finest. Some beautiful pitching by some of the Boulders' arms. Tyler Keese, or, or in particular, three innings pitched and over six Ks racked up. And I would say 
a successful preseason outing for the Boulders as they prepare for their contest with the Jackals opening night next Thursday, May 11th at 6.30 p.m. Thank you all for joining us here on this YouTube stream. I am Andrew Van Cura here at Clover Stadium. Boulders win this one 5-2. Thank you all for joining us. Hope to see you next Thursday for opening night on the Boulders Broadcast Network brought to you on YouTube.